What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sector for Nerds. Today, we're going to have a chat about Ahsoka Part 6. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. All that fun stuff. We're getting right into it. I'm going to be real with y'all. As, as amazing as last episode was, I think I even enjoyed this episode that much more. And when I sat back and thought about it afterward, I'm like, okay, I think the reason why I liked last week's episode, why we all liked last week's episode, was because of the Ahsoka Anakin stuff, right? Obviously, seeing Hayden Christensen back was awesome. Seeing the Clone Wars flashbacks was awesome. But then when you go back and look at it, it's like, okay, this took up like what? Maybe a third, maybe close to half of the episode? This though, from start to finish this entire episode, I was hooked. Last week was an episode about Ahsoka. This week was an episode about Sabine. I feel like there's so much that I want to talk about. And to be honest, I don't know where to start. I guess we can talk about a certain Chiss making his return in Star Wars, but also not just his return, but his live action debut. And that, of course, is Grand Admiral Thrawn. Played and voiced by Lars Mikkelsen, which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm sitting there looking at this dude, like when the, it was funny, because as me, my brother, my friend, we were all watching this episode, and we're sitting there like, oh, what's coming towards Sabine? Is it like the Purgles? Is Ahsoka coming to rescue them? And then they pan up and it's a fucking Star Destroyer, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a Star Destroyer. I'm like, that's the freaking chimera isn't it and then they show the bottom underneath it with the giant chimera underneath it i'm like oh my gosh it's finally happening oh my gosh we were all so excited and then that freaking organ music starts playing and you just know that shit's about to go down man just everything oh my gosh the stormtroopers the stormtroopers looked fantastic i mean those are some of the best looking stormtroopers i have ever seen now i do have a theory about those stormtroopers that maybe they're not as actually stormtroopers. I mean, they are stormtroopers, but what if there are chiss underneath those helmets? I could be wrong, because, like, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, like, how do you get so many chiss out there? But who knows? Like, you have the freaking Night Sisters out there, so why not have chiss as well? We could figure that out, right? Because that's another thing. The Night Sisters, they had a part in this episode. There were three of them there, and it was very interesting because it was very much implied that this was the, like, true homeworld of the Night Sisters, And it made sense, like, when we w go to this planet and we see, like, the statues of the heads. First of all, it looks like drawings in the cave that Ahsoka was in in the first episode, but it also reminded me a lot of Dathomir in the Clone Wars, when we see that Night Sister like, sanctuary base, whatever you want to call it, with, like, the giant head at the front of it. So I think it, it very much uh, made sense in that regard, but, and they kept calling them Dathomiri, I believe, instead of like Dathomirians, they were called Dathomiri. They also talked about how the Night Sisters used to ride the Purgle as well, which is an interesting piece of lore. Oh my gosh, there's so much to talk about. I'm so excited. Uh, what else do we want to get into? Balin and Shin, let's talk about them. I think it was funny because about halfway through this episode, I think both myself and my brother had the exact same thought. The whole time I've been thinking like, okay, Okay, Balin's gonna turn, Balin's gonna turn. And when I say turn, I mean like turning back to the to the light side. But by the end of this episode, I was like, man, I, I, I don't think it's Balin that's gonna turn. I think it's Shin that's gonna do it. I've like turned a complete 180 on this whole thing. Cause like she didn't seem too confident in like Balin's plan. And like, you really wanna stay here? Like, what is it you're after? And even when she asked, like, what was it like, you know, the Jedi Order? Do you miss it? I loved the the conversations between the two of them because it's something that I wish we would have seen throughout more of the episodes, but I'm glad we're getting it late than never. The beginning of the episode, where we get Ahsoka and Hugh Wang, and it was like the only time we see them in this episode, but Hugh Wang is like, let me tell you a story, and then says, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and I was like, that was, that was great. I think that's like, what, the first ever time in Star Wars that we've heard someone use that opening crawl line? That's pretty cool. Okay, you guys, we need to talk about it, because like, it's the biggest part of this whole episode right? Like Sabine going to find Ezra. And I'm very surprised that uh, Thrawn let her go. But then I like when they started explaining it afterwards, it made sense. Like they were basically trying to 
uh, let Sabine go to find him so then that way they could find him as well, right? Because apparently they lost track of Ezra. I thought maybe he would have been captured or something, but no, he got out of there. And so Sabine went to go find him. She gets ambushed by a bunch of raiders. She eventually takes them out. But eventually she finds like these Koopa Troopas, I guess is maybe what they are. And eventually they go and they go and they travel and they go to this village. And then eventually all of a sudden we hear, I knew I could count on you. And it's like, immediately, I, like, obviously, I wouldn't know what Ezra's live-action voice sounds like other than the hologram that we saw of him, but w the moment I heard I knew I could count on you, I knew 100% what was gonna happen, because that was, like, Ezra's whole thing in that last episode of, of season four, is I know I can always count on you. And they freaking reunite, they're just both smiling, Ezra's got this full-grown beard, like a freaking badass man, and the, the two of them hugging, and I'm just like, oh, this is so good. And then there's, like, moments, though, where I'm just sitting there like, man, but, like, I, I know they're not doing Ezra Bean, but man, this was the time. Like, they're sitting there hugging each other. It's just this incredible moment. And there were certain moments where it's, like, kind of awkward because it's like, are they going to actually do something? Are they not going to do it? But yeah, no, I think they're pretty intent on not doing it, which it's, it's okay, it's okay. And honestly, like, I wasn't even, like, on the, like, oh, Ezra and Sabine must be together bandwagon throughout Rebels, because I was always the person that's like, dude, like, you know, like, guy and girl, they can just be friends, you know, but, and I still believe that they can. But then, like, as time goes on, I'm like, okay, I mean, one can make an argument, right? Like, it's been a little bit since they've seen each other. Maybe they realize that there is something there, but it seems clear that they're not going to go through with that. Unless that's something that, because Ezra said, you're like a sister to me, but maybe Sabine feels differently. But we can get to that, because Ezra's like, look, how did you find me? How did you get here? And Sabine's like, look, can I just have this one moment here? Like, I, it's taken me this long to see you. Like, let me at least celebrate that. And then they, you know, get a, they get a move on, right? Because they, they can't stay in one place for too long. But then Ezra's like, look, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you found me, Sabine. I can't wait to go home. And Sabine kind of has this look on her face like, yeah, about that. <laughs> She had to make a deal with the devil, right? That was kind of the whole thing. So I get the feeling next week when he does find out, he ain't gonna be too happy. But maybe that's where Sabine can go. Oh, but I needed to see you because I love you. But that's, it's not gonna happen. But just imagine. Man, but like, again, this episode, like it, it told a perfect story just from start to finish. It was all about Sabine looking for Ezra. Like we spent an entire episode doing that. It's like... She makes the deal with the devil, she goes on this journey, and then eventually, at the, the very end, she finds what it is that she seeks. But yeah, we'll pro next week we'll probably get like Ezra and Sabine versus Balin and Shin. Maybe Ezra's got a brand new lightsaber that we don't know about. I think Thrawn might turn on Balin and Shin though. But speaking of Balin, we don't really know what his intentions are yet. Like, he keeps alluding to stuff. But we don't really know, like, what his game is. All I know is, you guys, I cannot wait for the next two episodes of this show. This show has been firing on all cylinders. I absolutely love and adore this show. This, this, is, already, this is up there for me with Clone Wars and Rebels as, like, my favorite Star Wars content that I've ever seen. This is, like... And I think a lot of it goes to, right, like, these are characters that I love. These are characters that I'm invested in. I love the story that they're telling, and I I cannot wait to see what they do with it. This, last week very much felt like, okay, this is the Ahsoka series. This week it felt like, okay, this is Star Wars Rebels Season 5. I think for the majority of the show, it's felt like Star Wars Rebels Season 5, but like, obviously last week it was, it was solely about Ahsoka, but man, I just, these characters, man, in this story, I, I love it. You know, they keep saying like, oh, Ahsoka's a story that, you know, you don't have to see everything, you don't need to see certain things, and it's like, man, I feel like though, if you're gonna truly enjoy this show, I think you have to watch Rebels and be a fan of it. Because it's it's very much a continuation of that show. So it's like, for, for all the people that sit there and go like, oh, I don't like this show, and it, this show's boring, and the characters are boring, and, and blah blah. Like, look, obviously everyone's entitled to their opinion. If you don't like this show, that's cool. 
I just, I feel like part of the reason why you may not like that show is because either A, you don't like Star Wars Rebels, or B, you haven't seen it. That's just my assumption. The only thing that just kind of bugs me when it comes to some of the people that don't like this show is that I know, like, for a fact that there are people out there that are simply are saying that they don't like this show because they want Disney Star Wars to fail. And look, I, listen, I understand for, like, any Star Wars fans that are out there that feel burnt out by Disney Star Wars, that feel let down by Disney Star Wars. I'm not going to say that I completely agree with all of it, but I understand it. And there are definitely things that I feel like Disney Star Wars could definitely have done better and things that they can definitely improve on. I'm not going to deny that. Listen, I have been critical of Disney Star Wars when it needs to be critical, but I also have to give it its flowers. But I think specifically... What I'm, I'm not necessarily giving Disney Star Wars its flowers, I'm giving Dave Filoni his flowers because he is the one person there that I feel truly understands Star Wars. He knows how to cater to a certain fan base and I feel like has done that incredibly well. So yeah, maybe I'm not like the biggest fan of Disney Star Wars, but I'm a fan of Dave Filoni and I'm a fan of everything that he's done. I think it's easy for some people to sit there, like especially with Ahsoka, right? Because I know some of the complaints at the start were, oh, Ahsoka's too wooden. Oh, she's not smiling enough. And yeah, it's a little bit different than, you know, what she was before. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, we don't know what's going on here. Like maybe she's, you know, like some dark stuff's going on in the time and you you don't know the story until you see it and it, it's funny because I did you know you sit there thinking throughout some of these episodes like okay what is it that Dave is trying to go for here and I feel like last week it was told perfectly because by the end of that episode we did start to see her smile a little bit more and we started to see her with the whole Ahsoka the White gimmick and becoming that better version of herself that is gonna wrap us up for today thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments below. I will see you guys next time. Ahsoka is another story where you can step in at any point and not feel that you necessarily have to have seen everything. Ah!